I've been adding columns inside of my obsidian space using call up blocks to hide buttons and hide loads of other information. But to add columns, we need to use CSS. So if I go down to settings in this new vault, go to the appearance tab, scroll all the way down, you can see there's the CSS snippets. And when I reload the snippets, there's nothing in here. So if I click on the folder, it has now created a snippets folder inside of my dot obsidian folder, which is inside the column vault. And just for reference, the vault folder called columns is what the obsidian vault is showing. So we've got a new file and a new folder, and they are showing as new file and new folder inside of that vault. Go to dot obsidian, go to snippets, and this is where the CSS is going to be. I personally use VS Code to manage all the CSS because it's free and easy to use. So once you've downloaded VS Code, if you haven't already, file, open folder, and I personally open the vault folder, so the entire folder, so I can see everything, but you can open just the snippets folder if you want. Now in the left sidebar, you can see columns as the vault folder, the main vault folder. I click into dot obsidian and there is the snippets folder. I'm going to right click, new file, type column.css. Of course, you can call this whatever you want, as long as it's .css, because we need CSS. And I use the CSS from this GitHub repository from FMK, I think I've said that right. Uh, and what you'd need to do is go in to GitHub through the link I've put in the description, scroll down, and there are actually a couple of options with this CSS. We're just going to use the multi-column one for this example, but there's also a wide views and gallery cards options as well. When I go down to the multi-column, you can see there's an explanation here, which will open up into the help documentation, which covers basically what I'm going to be showing you in the video. But this also gives you information on different options that obviously I won't go over in this video because there are gallery cards which are shown here, and then you have the wide view which is shown inside of here. You then have two options. You can either download the files from here, or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is my personal preference, so MCL multi-column CSS. Go to the top right of the file, and the two boxes is a copy raw content, so it's just going to copy everything that's inside of this file. When I go back to the column.css file I made, I can then paste all of that. And just so you're aware, all of this stuff in green is what's called a comment, so it doesn't actually do anything, it's just telling you what's going on. Same with all the green stuff down here. Now you don't need all of this CSS, but unless you're familiar with CSS, I wouldn't change, edit, or do anything. Just leave it as its own file. I'm now going to save the changes. So now when I use the specific CSS triggers that the file has, it's going to change the view inside of Obsidian, but only if the CSS snippet is enabled. So you can see the appearance tab in the snippets folder, we have that column file I made in VS Code. So if I turn this on, now when we add any of those triggers, it will then show them in columns. My personal preference is to use callout blocks so you can insert a callout either through the command palette, through a hotkey you've made, or through any other means of adding a callout. So for those unfamiliar, a callout is essentially a quote block, which is what this greater than sign is, and then it has an identifier for whatever the callout is. So we've got an open square bracket, exclamation mark, and then a keyword. And if I click out, it renders the callout block. There are a variety of callout blocks that I've got a cheat guide to in the that I'll link in the description, but this is the note callout block. If we remove the title and the trigger word, replace it with multi-column because that's what the CSS is looking for. If I click out, nothing really happens. It's just rendering what I'm showing. But if I add callout blocks inside of this multi-column, so you can see I've got a callout block inside. So this has got two greater thans. This has got one. So this showing this is a, a next indent. I then have a one and that's showing the difference saying this callout block is different from this callout block. Now I will get two columns. If I was to add another callout block, so making it a one, then indenting the callout block for two, I'm going to use the info callout type instead. Then when I leave it, it's giving me three. If you go to the settings and the editor tab, you can see readable line length is on and that makes everything narrow. So if you tick this off, it then makes it wider and then you can actually have more columns that you can, you can go in and edit the callout blocks just like you would normally. So if you put a minus, it will automatically close. If you put a plus, it will automatically stay open, but give you the option to toggle. And if you leave it blank, then it's just a callout block. So I now have the open that I can toggle closed and open. I then have the close that I can toggle open and closed. And then I have the callout block that I can't toggle at all. You can then extend this, so we've got a two callout block, and then we've got a three callout block, and this one is going to be indented inside of this one. So it's still three columns, because we've got the one, the one, and the one, but inside the second column, we now have another callout block. You'll also notice I've added a plus into the third callout as well, so when I go out, we've got the toggleable callout, the toggleable callout on this side, so now they are all closed, or I can open up this one, and then we have the callout block inside of the callout block. 
If you don't want the callout blocks to all be the same size, you can change the width. So if we come into the identifier, so we've got the note, add a pipe symbol similar to an alias, then go wide, dash, and then we have the option from zero through to five. If I put two on the first one, you can see this is now larger than these two. Adding zero doesn't do anything, it just keeps it to the default. So adding a two doubles the size, adding a three will triple the size. And you can play around with this as much as you want, making them all different sizes. For using ordered lists in a column, you can rename the trigger to blank container, then add a CSS class at the top as to how many columns you want. So in this case, I've got two column lists. So when I click out of here, it's turned that list of four into two columns. So first, second, third, fourth. So it's split the list in half, gone one half on one side, and the bottom half on the other side. I can change this to three, and it's now created three columns. So first, second, third, and fourth. And there are other options inside of the help documentation that I've linked in the description below to cover other areas. But for simplicity, I'm just going to leave it with callout blocks because that's all I use personally.